the red wave that's coming is going to be like the elevator doors opening up in The Shining. <laughs> 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 That's what I think. I think people are just like, what the f*** are you saying? You're, they're making Republicans. That was podcast giant Joe Rogan with his prediction for next week's midterm results, which are expected to be a referendum on the Biden presidency and the state of the economy. We'll get right into it. Joining us now to discuss is host of the Savvy Sabs podcast and co-host of Revolutionary Blackout Network, Sabrina Silvati, and former special assistant to President Biden and former White House press secretary for First Lady Jill Biden, Michael LaRosa. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Good morning. Me. I'll start with you, Michael. Is Joe Rogan right? Is this prediction accurate? Is this going to be a bloodbath, a red wave? And are Democrats, through their approach here, minting Republicans? I'd hate to be the one to say yes or no to a red wave. But like when I think of red waves, I think of like 1994 when Republicans unseated the sitting speaker of the House or mm. 2010 when they took out two committee chairs um, who'd been serving for decades. I'm not I don't really know what polls he's, he's looking at that says that because these Senate races are unusually tight. Republicans, in theory, should have put away some of these Senate races a long time ago. And I think where you see Democrats running strong in these Senate races um, in Ohio, in New Hampshire, in Georgia, the, re the Republicans who are running for governor are completely out polling the Republicans running for the Senate mm. by five to seven points. So something's going on. And I think it looks like or I think it seems like what Mitch McConnell um, referred to as candidate quality. And you're seeing that in the polling. It's really hard to vote for people you don't like personally. And the Republican candidates running for the Senate um, have consistently higher personal disapprovals than their Democrat than the Democrats running. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I've said on the show a couple times that in some way the Democrats are lucky that in these key Senate races the Republicans seem to have candidates that are either too far right outside the norm or are just disliked for, for whatever well, reason. And part of that is that they keep this addiction to Donald Trump and letting him crown their candidates in these primaries, yeah. a guy who lost the popular vote twice and just got killed with independence in 2020. And he's um, independents are really turned off by him and they are reminded every time they see him, that's why they voted against yeah. him. Mm. But Sabrina, you know, is that, well, that could be good short term news for the Democratic Party right now. It still doesn't speak well to their long term kind of uh, kind of planning or, or creating a coalition of people who are excited to vote for Democrats. I mean, what's what might if they do kind of limp over the finish line here, it's going to be very close either way. It's not going to be because, you know, de the Democratic candidates were really resonating with people, but they're just at the end of the day, even though they could vote for Brian, Brian Kemp or whoever it is, they, you know, they couldn't vote for Herschel Walker. Like that's, is, is that actually good news for Democrats in the long term? I wouldn't be too sure. Um, I actually had a caller that called into my show last week. Uh, she's in Pennsylvania and she's African-American woman. And she said that she will be voting for Dr. Oz and she's yeah. voted Democrat in the past elections. And her concern is mainly the economic issues that have happened under the Joe Biden administration, under de Democrat leadership currently in this country. So I think this is what happens when the economic needs of the people are not being met by the current administration. So we saw this happen under Obama, right? 2016, it swung completely in the other direction, and that's how we got Donald Trump. So I think the Democratic Party has made a mistake here by focusing primarily on the cultural issues, which, for example, the overturn of Roe v. Wade, it's not as important to voters as they thought it would be. Most voters are focused on the economic situation that they have in this country right now and inflation. And I think the Democratic Party, if they don't find a way to really to really focus on that, I mean, we're getting close here and looking at the dates. If they don't find a way to really focus on that, they're not going to win this month. Yeah, Sabrina, it really does feel like when, when Joe Rogan says they're minting Republicans, I, I understand what he means because I have seen a lot of people and heard from a lot of people like your caller who have been lifelong Democrats and who are saying things that Democrats failure to respond specifically to really top of mind issues, issues like the economy, issues like the war in Ukraine. We saw the, the progressive caucus really get slapped down for accommodating even a little bit of the 
majority of the majority opinion of 57% of Americans who are pushing, who want there to be more of a push toward peace in that region. And it does seem in some ways that it's not that the Democrats are talking about abortion, but there seems to be very little space to talk about almost anything else. And that is causing people to find weird, a, a weird alliance with the Republican Party that's never existed before. Does, does that resonate with you? It really does. It's interesting. I've actually spoken to Bernie Sanders supporters, and even some of them said they're voting Republican, uh, which is not what I recommended them to do. Yeah. I recommended them to leave the two party system altogether. But even some of them have swung in that direction because it's not that they don't care about Roe v. Wade, but it's more so that people who are working class and people who are poor they're more concerned about how are they gonna pay for groceries next month? If they're gonna be able to afford gas to get to work, that is the number one issue for most of the voters in this country. So I think the Democratic Party for a long time, they have focused on these cultural issues. This is how they sold Barack Obama to a lot of people. They said he could be the first black president. So-and-so can be the first black this, the first black that. and. And at the same time, the voters' economic needs are not being met. So where that may have worked before in the past, I don't think it's working this time around. Hmm. Michael, you, you know, you were part of the administration, so not to put you on the on the spot. Yeah. But, um, you know, how much does this feedback, is that sinking in? Is that making its way to Joe Biden's ears? To Are, are they getting it that that they, they are losing um, a, a kind of working class support for, for economic reasons, maybe, maybe some crime reasons, maybe some education policy, a variety of things. Barack Obama gets it. He was on the campaign trail characterizing things in a way that I think had a really broad appeal. He talked about abortion, but it was maybe the third or fourth thing that he brought up in his sequence in his speech. He called out Republicans for not having a substantive pro program on the economy, despite winning that issue simply because of the power of not being in office and mm -hmm. thinking that people just want to change, of course, in the midstream. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Biden, uh, sorry, Obama seems to get it. Mm -hmm. Progressives have been calling out for a long time. Why mm -hmm. haven't we seen a kind of messaging more from the, the Biden administration that does seem to foreground the economy? Well, I, I think... Well, I, I would disagree. Obviously, I think it is sinking in. I think you're seeing it in wage hikes that are going up from employers who are attracting more more workers. The job market is the best it's been in decades. In August, uh, the prices for home ownership fell. Uh, I think for the first time, the fastest rate in 11 years. Um, I, I just don't buy that they're not that they're not. Um, that, it, that this is an economic, economic issue. I also don't know if that's always the case of the, the reason why people vote. Uh, you might be unhappy with the economy, but you, that doesn't mean you're going to vote for Dr. Oz. Uh, Hillary Clinton did actually win um, voters who said the economy was their most important um, priority in 2016. Uh, George Bush lost when unemployment was at a high back then of of 6%. People don't always really vote their pocketbooks. They may tell you that, but uh, I don't do necessarily think, it think it's true. Well, what do I think what is? I mean, but, so I, why why is it that why is it that in a race like the one between with um, uh, 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 awesome. Herschel Walker? Oh, sure. Go ahead. You know, I understand that typically the administration in power loses seats and so there's a sure. way that it being competitive at all yeah. is a credit to the democrats it's very standard or, operating procedure but also herschel walker being who he is uh -huh. a man who i wouldn't necessarily describe as especially knowledgeable or articulate and who has a yeah. lot of moral failings certainly and, and not scandal, scandal after free. scandal not scandal exactly free. why is it so close if it's not about some of these uh, these other kinds of what to, what is what is driving well the Georgia some of those Georgia provisions? is basically the new Pennsylvania I mean I think Joe, Joe Biden was the first president to win Georgia since 1996 so it's still an incredibly divided state um, I don't I don't remember the exact margin but as you know I think uh, we had a certain president say he just needed 11,000 more votes in order to to win. Hmm. So it is incredibly, when it comes to voter registration there, it's incredibly tight. It's divided. Hmm. Um, I think that, I think the, the bigger story is that Warnock being an incumbent in a really bad year for Democrats is three points ahead of Herschel Walker. Hmm. Um, I would say go back to Pennsylvania. If you look at the polling there, uh, the entire uh, fall, the entire summer, Fetterman has led, I think, in every poll except one. Hmm. It's the exact same climate as 2010. Pat Toomey trailed in one poll against Joe Sestak. And the spread John Fetterman has is greater than his. Yeah, but 2010 wasn't mm. exactly a banner year for Democrats. Exactly. That's my point. There's no way John Fetterman should be in a better position than Pat Toomey was to win. 
Well, according to a new Axios report, a coalition of progressive groups is launching a multi-million dollar ad campaign ahead of next week's midterms with the message, your fundamental freedoms belong to you. The quote, protect our freedoms coalition is focused on appealing to the swing voters and anti-Trump Republicans who voted Biden into office in 2020. They want to make clear that this election is not a referendum on the current president, but instead a choice between MAGA Republicans and Democrats. Sabi, what do you think about this choice? I think this is a bad idea. Uh, one of the things I noticed in that article is that they're not trying to unite swing voters over policy. They're trying to unite them over orange man bad. And mm. that's no different than what the Democrats are already doing. And it doesn't seem to be working for them, right? So how do you do that? Because we talk about the problems a lot, but I think it's important to also talk about the solutions. The way that you do that is through ballot initiatives in these states. So I live in a ballot initiative state. And one of the things that I have noticed is that when you have these, these questions on the ballot, question one, two, three, four, and five, when you go to vote, you are focused solely on the question because it's not attached to a candidate, therefore it's not attached to a political party. So this is how we were able to pass like legalization of marijuana in Massachusetts because there was no candidate attached to it. And that was a policy that Democrats and Republicans approved of. Medicare for all is on the ballot this November in Massachusetts. Now, it's only for certain counties. Uh, the organization responsible for this feels it's best to start small and then see how it works. And if it does work well, then they can put it throughout the rest of the state. But a lot of these progressive policies have already been passed on, on the local level, right? So Bernie Sanders wealth tax, that's on the ballot this November. This is the fastest way to implement those policies. And I wish this coalition was doing that, uniting those voters over policy and not so much orange man bad. What do you think about this message, well, Michael? Well, I think that taking away a fundamental right for women to decide her own health care is actually policy. I think it reminds me a lot of 2012 when um, the Republican Congress tried to repeal Obamacare. People really don't like their rights taken away, and they showed that in 2012. Uh, the Supreme Court stepped in as well and said the same thing. Um, and I think that's what Democratic groups are trying to say here, is that why should a woman's reproductive rights be uh, different than in Pennsylvania than Ohio. That's policy. Yeah, I think I, 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 I agree and disagree with you, Sabi. On some level, I, I do agree that there's an overemphasis on abortion. I do think abortion has been shown as an issue to drive turnout, and the Democrats should stop talking about it. But it's the way it is being prioritized at times to the exclusion of other issues mm -hmm. that I think starts to hurt Democrats. Because it's great if you care about abortion, but any single issue it's probably not going to win you an election. Mm -hmm. And that's true of even the most important issues that we have in this country. But I think we have to leave it there. I really appreciate both of you for joining us today. This has been a great discussion. And we will have more rising for you right after this.